What's up, guys? Welcome to City Podcast, episode 206. It's your boy, Eric, and I'm here with... Tony. Tony. And... Tony. Roman. I also do hey. hate that boy. Oh, God damn it! I was about to say he didn't say it. I was like, yeah, <laughs> boy. Your boy Roman doesn't have some love for Eric. But no, that ain't... That's, that ain't what happened. That's, that's, that's never gonna happen. Ooh. It'll happen one day. It'll <laughs> hit you with that. Never gonna yeah, happen. It'll, it'll, it'll creep in on you. <laughs> all right, all right, there, TLC. No, wait, uh, who sings that song? Never gonna get it. Is it TLC or no. is it a uh, song Pepper? Never or am I just thinking someone totally different? Never, never, never gonna get it. Never gonna get it. Never gonna get it. It might be TLC. <laughs> is that TLC? It is T. It's uh, in vogue. In vogue. In vogue. And it's okay, the the song. Mind. The song is actually called "My Love." You're gonna get it. In quotations, you're never gonna get it. Oh my love, you're gonna get it. Alright, fair enough. So, anything interesting happened this week? Fuck no. Depression hit. No. <laughs> Fuck. Ooh. Depression hit me fucking hard this week. I don't know what happened. Like, I think it's I think it's just the weather. I think it's I think it's honestly just like uh like it being rainy and shit that kind of just set it off for a little bit. Ever, it's ever funny you said Tuesday, that, Roman. Oh, go for it. Go for it. Ever since Tuesday, I feel like I'm yeah. a, a day ahead. Like I thought Wednesday was Thursday. I thought Thursday was Friday. I thought Friday was Saturday. And today was like it's Saturday, and I was like, why is this week so fucking long? It feels like Sunday. It just, yeah, dude. I, uh, I, I actually had that exact thought yesterday, where it was towards the end of the day, the work day, and it was just a shit. It was just a shit day because it was like, uh, drizzling all day. It was cloudy, and then like it rained for a little bit. So I was just fucking like wet all day outside. Um, I bet you weren't wet all day, Diddy. <laughs> but it was just muggy. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't. It was like perpetually like in the mid seventies and just rainy. It was like hot rain. I was like fuck, and uh, I had this thought. I was like, oh shit, is it only Thursday? Like I was like fuck, and I was like, no, 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 no. Okay, you got you got your check yesterday. I was like, okay, I had to like talk myself through because I was just fucking in a daze. I just I I don't know. It, it, I think it's I think it is the weather. It just like rain does have like an effect on people. You need sunlight. I mean, I like the weather. I like I like the rainy weather, and I like how cool it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like enjoyed the rain. Wednesday, it was but nice I, and fresh and windy. Mm-hmm. I think my brain was just dead ahead. That's all it is. It was a complete day ahead until today, and like twenty minutes ago, before we started the podcast, I asked, "Hey, Roman, what'd you do today?" Knowing and that you told me that you had played that uh little ship game of yours, that like battle whatever. Yeah. Well, was that today? I seemed like I got that message yesterday. And I was like, "What the fuck?" I just I can't catch up, dude. Yeah, and it's it's I don't know. It's just a weather change. It, it, for me, I think it's just a weather change. It's like uh, you know, the April showers, May flowers kind of thing. So uh, yeah. I think I think my depression and rage started this week when I found out I was a failure. I told my brother, I was like, "Man, I felt completely fucking." Defeated by the world How because so? we were um, we're trying to clean up the yards and stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, we're gonna sell the Corvette. Remember, I told you I want to sell the Corvette to work on my brother's car. Mm-hmm. So I can see it. Yeah. Well, for for some reason in my head, I didn't think the car was as far gone as it is. Mm-hmm. Mostly because I put a lot of money into it, mm-hmm. so I thought you know yeah I could get a I could get a decent price off it. Because in my head, it needed just a battery and it would, you know, start. And, it, you know, I'd be like, hey, it's running and shit. You know, this is how much I want. Yeah. <clears throat> so a dude came by. He's like, I want to buy it. Let me check it out. I was mm-hmm. like, cool. He's like, he looked at it. He's like, hey, man, that car's pretty big up. I was like, not really, man. It just really just needs a battery. Mm-hmm. So I told my brother, even before looking at it, I told my brother, hey, go get a battery for me. I I go. I, I'm gonna put the money into it, but I'll get the money at the at the, the end of it, right? Mm-hmm. 
I was like, cool. So he bought me a he bought me the battery. And when we were to start the car, I realized that the snow really did a fucking number at it. You know, with the snow being so cold, then for some reason it got really hot all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. It like cooked and rust my car like fucking hard, dude. Like that car looks like a piece of crap now. And I was like, I was devastated, dude. And then I um. I put the battery in, and I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe this is just the top layer, you know? Mm-hmm. Needs a good cleaning, you know, just some TLC. Mm-hmm. And I put the car, I put the battery in, and it wouldn't turn on. And I was like, fuck, man. And it just, all like, all of a sudden, it all hit. It was like, for the, for the longest time, I considered myself a, a car guy. Mm-hmm. I considered myself a gearhead, you know? Always talk cars, always kind of knew a little bit here. Mm-hmm. We always had that conversation of Ford versus Chevy and uh, imports versus, you know, muscle cars and all that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I considered myself a fucking car guy until I realized that any car guy worth, you know, <clears throat> any they would call, you would look at these cars and, and fix them themselves. Mm-hmm. And I'm over here being like, I'm fucking just get rid of it. I, I was just fucking, I felt defeated and depressed and then we saw my my dad's trailer and i was really sad i don't know why we were, i was sitting there and i was like i can't believe it's gone hey sam, yeah, what up? Yes, sam. welcome to city podcast episode 206 with your boy eric and tony yeah. now, and your now friendly the, neighborhood turtle the uh Roman. the uh orientations changed again okay <laughs> where you at now from my face um, your your diagonally down yeah, here. This, this way. Tony okay. is down here, and Sam is over here. So I gotta uh, look at me. you like this. No, the other way. No, the other way. Like that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that's why. That's where the week started to be like, oh man, I'm a my day ahead. All this shit just fucking hit me. You know, it's fucking depressed the whole week. Can't get out of it though. Can't get this funk off me, dude. Funny thing about All depression, I had though. Fucking rage. Mm-hmm. I went to go pay my bill, right? Mm-hmm. And over here in the neighborhood, there's a little store that sells party supply stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, when I went to go in to the T-Mobile, I saw like six employees outside, and I was like, "Ooh, there's about to be a fight!" Mm-hmm. Right? Thinking like maybe one of the chicks was sleeping with like the dude or something. And it was like the other chicks dude, and I was like, "What?" So I started playing these scenarios, and I was like, "What's going on?" But then I looked across the street because they were all looking at one way, mm-hmm. and uh, I saw that there's a party store over there, and there was a shitload of cops. So I was like, "Ooh, it's probably a drug bust. Maybe it was a drug front. Maybe fucking they were hiding illegals there." But I didn't see no INS or nothing, right? So I walk into the store. I pay my bill. I'm talking to the guy because there's only two people now inside the store. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, hey, what's up? He's like, I don't know. Apparently, there's something going on. I was like, well, if you want to go look, you can go look. He's like, nah, nah I got to help you. And I was just like, word, word, word. And there's this, like, I can't, I can only see there, but there's like four or five squad cars, mm-hmm. uh, a white van, and I'm just looking, right? And you can't really see what's going on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, by the time that I see something kind of like move on the way over there, uh, this fucking like SUV blocks my field of vision. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, huh, did I think I saw what I saw? And the guy's like, no, oh, what is it? I was like, I think it's one of those gurneys that you like carry dead people in. And he's like, no, I was like, dog, I think so. So when the van loaded up and left, mm-hmm. the employees came in. And the guy that was helping me asked one of the employees, he's like, hey, was there a dead body? And they're like, dude, yes, check it out. I got it on video. And they showed it to us. And I was just like, yeah, you see, like, the the bag and the body. Apparently, well, I was just wondering, you know, did they kill him? Did he kill himself? Did he, like, die of a sickness and nobody know? Something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not the first time that we find out that someone leaves a body somewhere after they killed him, right? And they just stay there for a while. But later on, I found out from my uh, my girl's dad, who knows the owner of the store, mm-hmm. 
And it was a dude who also was feeling depressed mm-hmm. maybe this week or last week and just yeah. offed himself. And I was just like, holy shit. Did you see that little white car that was parked there for like a week or two, to be honest? Mm-hmm. And it never moved. And I was just like, oh, shit. So that was, a, you know, that was my big thing for the week. Mm-hmm. Also, we got chicks. Little baby chickens. Like and what? At your house? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have a mutual friend. His name is Big Dick Dave. That's not his real name, but that's his moniker. Yeah. And uh, he wanted me to go get him some uh, baby chickens. Mm-hmm. And we kind of looked at to where we go, and you can buy them right here on Nogalitos on uh, Rudy's Feed Store. And we buy the chicks, and I take a picture of them, and I sh- and I send them to my girlfriend, and she's just like, "Oh, it's like we should get some." And I was like, "Nah," because you know we had a chicken before, and it got eaten by the neighbor's dog when it got loose. So you know, we don't want to go through that again. And I was also letting the dogs loose at night, so they could like, you know, survey the uh, the the land. Yeah. Fucking today she goes in a, like a, a girls trip with my mom and my my cousin mm-hmm. and uh, I get a text saying hey don't get mad I was like why it's like we may or may not have bought some chicks and I was just like you bought girls <laughs> she's like no baby chicks I was like now you stealing baby kids and she's like motherfucker you know what I mean. Baby chickens, and I was just like, word, 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 word. And I was like, why? She told my mom the story about the chicks, and mom was like, oh, yeah, let's get some. <laughs> we'll say it's for Juan Diego or something. And I was just like, all right. So she comes home, and there's two little baby chicks, but they're, like, so cute that they sat on my finger like this. And I was just like, yes, I felt like a villain. And I was just like. Hopefully you villain, to be big what, enough. What villain has chicks? <laughs> Every villain has chicks, bro. <laughs> See what I did there? He fell yeah. for that one so easy, bro. <laughs> he set that up. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna log off right now. I'm gonna go fucking get a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, alright, Sam. Cute. You look tired as fuck, bro. You look like you had a week. Shit, dude. I've had months now. What? Join the club, man. Hey, fucking Eric, you remind me of the black girl that does that new the one that goes, not today. Not today. <laughs> she has a sweet beard like this, too? Yeah. No. Sweet fuck, bitch. Oh. Where she's all like, there's yeah. fire in the house. <laughs> not today. Not today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking more of the dude from Family Guy. It's, it's gonna rain. So the main thing is my voice reminds y'all of black people. Y'all no, racist. No, no. The way y'all that, the way you act, the way you talk, just like that. Ah. Uh... Not your voice, but the way you talk. Yeah. Right. You're just, you're just, you're just, you're just, you're just co- culturally, of, culturally appropriating mannerisms. Oh, fuck well, did you well, just well, say? Well. Why are you using big words? I don't know what It's not my fault you're dumb. What? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm dumb now. Yeah, I used to be yeah. smart. You no, know, I used to think I was smart. There you go. But I, I don't have a smart man's life, so I must be pretty stupid. I, I actually, I honestly didn't also want to like shit on you when you were talking about like, oh, I've always considered myself a car guy, and I was like, I've never considered you a car guy because like I know yes. car guys, and I'm like, oh, you're. No, you, you don't know anything like that. Like they know cars. Like you I know, know you cars. know uh, you know like I know uh, most of you, you know common That's sense crazy. things about cars. You know what I mean? Like oh, well, like this he... isn't working. Like check this, this, and this. Like yeah, you know common sense things. But I mean, I, I, I like know to people. know that to say that you know cars that you're like my buddy, like Brian and and. Uh, my buddy Marty, they have a channel which you can check it out on YouTube. 
uh, Street Fiends. Um, shout out to Street Fiends. Shout out to Street Fiends. But, like, you go there, and they're actual car guys. Like, uh, they know their shit. You know, this is this is the thing, though. I know muscle cars, and I know the engine parts, I know the models and stuff. Mm-hmm. And my brother went to school for cars. Mm-hmm. So, you yeah. know, together, you know, we have conversations about cars. And my older brother likes cars, and my dad likes cars. And my dad was one of those that if something's broken, he's going to fix it. He's going to find a way to fix it with himself. Yeah. So he made us tag along for everything, you mm-hmm. know, from anything. I seen them. I saw that man change engines, transmissions, everything from a car from the beginning to the end of the car. Mm-hmm. And he made us help him so we could know I'm in case, you know, <laughs> in case we ever something breaks or, you, you know, you're on the road and shit happens. Mm-hmm. He showed us, you know, this is at least the common sense of, oh, this is what broken, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So for the longest time, I considered myself a car. I have uncles that are actual car guy, car guys. Mm-hmm. One's a one fixes bodies and the other one's a mechanic. Yeah. And we're, we're always around them. So my mindset, we were car guys, mm-hmm. you know? When we, we didn't have anything to talk about, we talked about the cars. We used to go to car shows. We did all that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you, I picked up that, uh, that, that, that thing is like, I'm a car guy. Mm-hmm. But, man, I mean, I'm not. You, you can. I haven't messed with a car in a long time. Like, the last thing I messed with was the Corvette, mm-hmm. and that was it. I mean, I do stuff to my truck, mm-hmm. but it's very minimal. Yeah. It's, it's more like, Put around with, yeah, put gas, making sure things okay. You don't even know how to change the wipers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's but, but like, uh, that's the thing is like, I I understand that like yeah like you know your your dad like and I've seen your I saw your dad you know actually work on trucks and like make that some bitch run so I knew he was like very handy and he knew what he was doing there, but again. You can only know so much through osmosis, like, you know, just by, like, observing and, like, things like that. But without actually doing it, like, I don't know if you know how to do it. Especially when it comes to, like, mechanics. That's, like, a whole other fucking thing. Like, complete. That's a completely different thing. So, like... Like, I was talking to Pruman the other day, mm -hmm. and I I thought myself a collector. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Now, he was talking to me about his collection and how he does the grind to get all the stuff he has. Mm-hmm. Turns out, not a collector either. I was like, damn, do you put my shit in shape? This boy has a system. Mm-hmm. He does it consistently. Consistently. He does it overs and overs. Consistently. <laughs> Repetitively? Yes. Repetitive. You couldn't even yeah, say that yeah, right. Yeah, Come yeah, on, man. Yeah. He has a Don't he consider himself a wordist, but he's <sighs> not. <laughs> Remember when I told you guys I wanted to be a voice actor? Yeah. I mean, oh, but you know, he has, a, he has a list of the stuff that he's looking for, the stuff he has. Mm-hmm. He, he has, you know, he knows where his shit is. Everything's well documented. And I was like, yeah, I just have crap. That's what I have. That's who I am. I just have stuff. I have a whole bunch of stuff. I don't even know what I have anymore. But yeah. This week has been a uh, yeah. This week has been one of those uh, eye-opening hits. weeks. Yeah, yeah, I get you. I I I feel the same way. I feel, I'm like, man, I'm like I gotta start. Uh, I started thinking, well, I have to start pushing myself more at the gym, like or mm-hmm. at the gym. I have to actually fucking like push myself, uh, just because like I do it, but it's like simple shit. Like I'm not challenging myself, so I'm I'm the same way. Uh, fucking huffing and puff. I actually started doing cardio because I'm huffing and puffing upstairs and shit. So I mean, it's just one of those things. Uh, I have to like reevaluate my diet and like do actual meal prepping so like I can actually get a decent amount of vegetables in because that's one thing I haven't been getting in. Dude, um, I don't want to reevaluate anything. I think I'm gonna get me even more sad or depressed if I do. Bro, there's no. Like I said, I used I used to think I was smart, not car guy, not collector, not I'm not a gamer. Cause all my controllers were broken like this morning. Like my brother, <clears throat> I, for some reason I've been wanting to play Marvel. Mm-hmm. Right, ever since I found my copy of Marvel's Capcom 2, I've been wanting to play. Mm-hmm. 
but none of my systems have two working controllers. And this morning, uh, my brother busted out his big old TV. Yeah. And it's in the kitchen. I was like, you know what? I challenged him. I go, let's go. Marvel's Capcom 3. Mm-hmm. I know you have it in your system. Let's play. Mm-hmm. He's like, all right. Here, we played the first two matches. My controllers were busted. Like, you went down and it activated the the taps, the R1s and the R2. Uh-huh. I was like, okay, well, they ain't going to work. I'm going to go get a second controller. You go la- uh, you go to the side. Mm-hmm. And he- and they brought in the, the tag system. Uh-huh. I was like, well, this controller was broken. So I just, I, you know, we played up to a first 10. Mm-hmm. I got frustrated. I was like, man, I know our fucking controllers work. I was just like, ah, damn it. We have like eight controllers and none of them are working. Yeah, and the reason my screen is... And then I got even more depressed because the reason my screen is green, I'm not, you know, camera mode, is that my tablet broke. It was like... I can't keep a tablet working. I was like, man, and I for I was looking at YouTube videos of how to fix it or how to get around it because it's it's stuck on safe mode. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. And it won't let me get into Discord. It won't let, let me use the camera. Yeah. I was like, oh man, I, I'm pretty sure I can fix this. I watched a couple of videos. I I even went to the Samsung's page and I was reading, you know, troubleshooters and shit. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know how I'm able to fix this. After the the first four troubleshooters I tried mm-hmm. didn't work, I was like, man, fuck today, and I just chugged it. I was like, no, oh, I'll go get it professionally fixed by someone. So if I ever hear about it in my in my life, oof, it's gonna be a sad moment. Yeah, but there's no way to move it's forward unless you reevaluate, because then uh, you you can't move forward because you have to be able to like evaluate what your situation status is now and then you can like make uh certain Before. preparations to move forward from that to like no. fix, to fix that you know how afraid i am to go back to school yeah i, had I, know. To take those, I know i know those reevaluating tests to see where you stand mm-hmm. you see if you have to take the intermediate things mm-hmm. they're like dude you have to go back to elementary you stupid i was like what test do you think you do the best at? Math. I know numbers. Can't read for shit. Can't write for shit. Can't talk for shit. But give me numbers. I'm good with. But you All know, right, Raymond. You, <laughs> but you know <laughs> that, like, they're not just going to give you number problems, right? <laughs> You're gonna yeah, have really you're gonna have problems. it's it's word problems that you're gonna have to figure out and you're gonna have to do algebra yeah. for and Wait, things like I, that. Why do you think I'm I'm afraid of doing it? I, I mean, haven't done it again. Like you know that you're gonna be bad at fucking algebra. Fucking if you if you're serious about it, then go ahead and try to look at some like algebra videos. There's tons of them that you can learn from YouTube. Oh kind yeah, of stuff. when I was helping my nieces with their homework. There's those teachers that do YouTube videos now mm-hmm. for the basic stuff. Yeah. <sighs> All I remember is Y equals MX plus B. That's one of those ones to find like the, uh, the, the coordinates s- and stuff on the uh, graph. Yeah, it's a slow formula. And, yeah. and, and then you got your you got your Pythagorean theorem. You know, Pythagorean theorem. Mm-hmm. A squared plus B squared is equal C squared. And then, what is it to find the angle of every triangle? You can at least find out that there's got to be like a 90 degree or then it's that cute isosceles and whatnot. Anyways, I mean, I. It's not going to be that hard. I do that for for school. So, yeah. yeah I so. mean, it's. I, I know a good majority of it because I have to, so I can pass. Um, but, oh, that's another thing. I figured out because like the way that the school for for this electrician thing works out is if you get a 91 overall average um you get like 600 bucks back like of your Ooh. tuition. So like I paid 800 I'll get 600 back. There's no way in fuck I'm getting to 91 because I'm at a 90 I'm at a 83.1. But if you hit 85 at least an 85 average you have you can get at least three hundred dollars back. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm pretty close to that. I have to get on the last two tests that we have. I have to get at least an eighty-six on both of them. 
to get a, like an 85 flat. And you don't need, you don't, to get you a don't, 90. So, you, don't, you don't even have Mark to cheat off of either. What are you talking about? I gave Mark most of the answers. <laughs> oh, I thought you guys were doing the whole dual conquer the class thing. Yeah, 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 what we would do is like he would take half of the the chapters and I do half the chapters like for like homework. But uh-huh. most of the time he'd be like working 12 hour days so I would just do all the homework and just be like here here's the here's the homework just fucking do it so that you don't fail. Uh oh, okay. so that you don't fail out. Uh, <laughs> and that that was it. So I mean he was always saying like oh you're always fucking because I I do I have like I mean, I have regular anxiety, but I guess test anxiety is another thing. Um, where, like, I just get, like, nervous. Even though I, I've i studied, I know the shit that's going on, I still get nervous about, like, fuck, what, what if I, like, didn't remember this? Or, like, what if this comes up? I don't know it as well. So... Should they eat in tests, so you should get so nervous and be like, I'm gonna fucking piss my pants. So you start doing the tests, like, really fucking fast. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whatever. And then the closer, you know how... Uh, most of, most, like, like, maybe my last two years of college before I dropped out, all my tests were multiple answers. Mm-hmm. I stayed giving a fuck, like, anxiety was kicking in so bad. Like, the first 20 minutes I was confident, right? Mm-hmm. And then it started kicking in. I was like, oh, man, I gotta, I'm gonna fucking, your stomach starts hurting, your mind starts wandering, get the urge to piss so bad. I was like, oh, man, they tell you right off the bat, he's like, oh, you can't. No, no restroom breaks and shit. Mm-hmm. So, 60 minute, 90 minute test. Once you're done, you can leave. Okay. I was like, fuck that, dude. Like, after like first 20 minutes, I was like, I don't give a fuck. I started doing the whole C, 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 C. You know? You remember those, uh, the, the Simpsons stuff? Yeah, the, what are they called? Like the Scantron sheets and shit? Mm-hmm. No. You just start going the angles and shit. I was like, I don't give a that was the funny thing, though. I only failed one test. Everything oh. else was passing. I was like, look at that. You know how I can I cured my anxiety on a test? I fall asleep during it. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's not really curing anything. I'd, but, yeah. I'd answer like half of it. I'd answer as far as I could, and then i started getting sleepy, and I was like, all right, rest mode, and I'd go to sleep. And then the teacher would tap me on the shoulder, and I was like, what's up? I was like, Oh, right, right, right. And I'm all refreshed, so I get back to it and I finish it. And then, you know, go do something. I'm I'm not a t- <laughs> uh, I'm not a terrible student. I'm just lazy. That's it. When I when I you know, know when I know I can get away with the bare minimum, I'll get away with the bare minimum. You know what's the dumbest thing? I love homework. I love studying. Uh huh. Like when I was I was helping my nieces, dude, I enjoyed the fuck out of that. Doing the research, you know, getting the notes, trying to explain to them the, the problems and, and all that. Mm-hmm. I had fun doing that. I actually enjoyed that. I was a, one of those dudes that actually enjoyed doing their schoolwork. As long as I don't have to do it in front of people and I, like, it could be in my own little bubble. Mm-hmm. I love doing that shit. But put me in a classroom, put me in test mode. Ooh, I'm horrible. I fall apart. Good thing out of this week, though. The best thing out of this week is I figure out how to stream. Mm-hmm. That was like the one happy moment this week. Like, yeah, I finally fucking did because it. it was breaking my head for like a week and a half that I decided I was going to stream. I was like, I finally fucking did it. I was like, yes. Such a relief. I was like, all right, cool. There you go. See, I could do that. Then it turns out you have to do so much more shit. Link in the description below. <laughs> yeah, we'll put the, the description. I'm going to forget. Uh, but yeah, it's twitch.tv uh, slash uh, grim works. underscore works. Yeah, everything so. usually grim works. But yeah, Keep I had the paper fun. With the, with, the, with the permanent marker and just put it on the screen real quick. Like, oh, right. Twitch.tv. I don't a have, little swipey I thingy. Man, what kind Ooh. of fucking nerd are you? No, what are you streaming on Twitch? Uh, Magic and Pokemon. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> You don't, you don't like Magic or Pokemon? Dude, if I play anything else, it's just going to be embarrassing. I suck at Call of Duty. That's the but... best thing, though. Nobody, not, they don't always want to see somebody that's, like, getting mass kills. They want to see somebody oh. with regular Joe doing regular Joe. 
bad moves. So Here's they the can make themselves I... feel better. <laughs> Yeah, I exactly. would make myself feel bad. You gotta be an I angry like gamer. Like, I like winning. I like winning, so I... Every time you lose, Yeah, exactly. That's the thing, though. I, I like winning, so I know magic in Pokemon. Uh, I saw that Fighting stream. Games? You, you barely won against uh, Prune a few times. <laughs> so, I mean... And, and Prune really, like, knows how to play. Like, when I, when I see him... Like when I when I was watching you and I was like, oh, you're like you you. Not saying that you don't know how to play other uh, colors because I saw you win with another color, but like black is just like the color to you, you play. Oh, you be racist for Roman because it's what it I is. Think it's Roman. Uh, <laughs> no man. Because twenty twenty one. Because with, with the black, black, black is all about like killing opposing creatures or. Um, like uh, hand manipulation, like hand dis- like uh, hand destruction. Uh, so you lean towards that, like just very easily. So I like, lean towards rogues. I like I like fast games. Yeah, exactly. Green so and green and magic, green and black is usually where I go to either make something really big and just get it across the board or kill everything. Yeah. Nah, green and white. Buddy. But hey, green and white is good. I just how my switch on. Plus, the difference between me and Proman, he has almost all the cards. Like mm-hmm. I said, that guy knows how to do things right. Mm-hmm. He knows how to collect. He knows that if you want to have the stuff, you have to put money into it. Mm-hmm. I I've been I've been really, 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 really one of those people that wants to do stuff free to play, so I don't put money in anything. Yeah, like my brothers and and uh. Aaron, the dude we play with, they, they put money into their systems and their games, and, and you know, mm-hmm. they have all this stuff. Me, I, I'm a hard headed. I'm be like, I want to do this free to play. And at the end of the day, it costs me because I don't have everything to make the decks I want to the way I want to. Yeah. But I do all right. I've gone to Mythic. Yeah. I, won in, I won tournaments in, in Pokemon. It's done decently. I'm not saying you that's don't. A, that's the thing. I'm a decent. Mostly in in all aspects of the stuff. Yeah. But I am not like a true connoisseur of the stuff. Yeah, but when I like, see, like I could tell you, I, I I'm decent at cars. I could tell you, you know, if oh, like, hey man, you know, scary. I'm having fun with this car. That's the all problem. Right. You just don't care about the things. You don't take care I, of it. You do a lot so. of negligence. Yeah. You get it. You say you got it, and then you just leave it alone. I'm like, man, I'm so the Corvette. It's like, yeah, I do the Corvette, and you're like, nah. Or the game, he's like, I got the games. Where'd they go? I don't fucking know. Oh, okay. So he, he's just a <laughs> hype beast. Is that what you're saying? He, there, is, there is no organization. That's what we don't have in this family. Because mm. I buy shit. I don't care about it. So I lose it. Mm-hmm. And I find it later. I was like, oh, sweet. I got it. But I, not being materialistic, don't care what I get. I just get it because mm. I want it at the time, which is bad. It's a bad trait. Mm. But Tony is like, I save, I get it. He's happy for a little bit of time of getting it, mm. but he doesn't consistently take care of it, mm. or he doesn't follow through with the other stuff. There's no follow through in this family. We just shoot the threes and hope he get the basket of the lens. You know what I mean? It's no, it's no follow through. You just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, you, we just fucking granny shot it. You, you, you don't, you don't follow shoot through. Shoot for the back of the square. Shoot for the little square in the back. <laughs> Throw it as hard as you fucking can. Exactly, chuck the fuck. You know what I'm saying? I, I, uh, That's how we do it. I don't know. I started saying uh, "suck my fuck" again, and Hell yeah. and, <laughs> and there was some dude at work. He was like, "What?" And he's older than me. And I was like, "Hey, you never heard suck my fuck?" He's like, "Nah, first time." He goes, "But it's making it into the lexicon." I was like, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, dude, but. Are you yeah. still calling him out cock holsters? It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. If, if you guys want to see Pokemon Magic, check out the stream. I'm yep. decent. I'm decent Magic in Pokemon. I'm not saying you're, you could talk all this shit. You're, you're not. It's it's not that you're not decent. It's just that you can see the skill level between. Like when I was when I was watching the play, I saw mm. the skill level between like you and Prune. Like mm. th- there is a certain like thing that you have to do. Uh, especially when you're playing online, even though like mm-hmm. you may not have anything in hand, you have to have the threat of that. 
Like it doesn't matter what color you're playing. You see it more more uh, in blue more than anything because of those counter spells. And you know you you always want to see what you can do there. But when it comes to like playing online just in general, one of the things is like you kind of hold back. Like you don't automatically just like play a land just to play a land. Like you you know that most of your deck's gonna be uh you know in, in the lower range like the lower cost range you know like the five and lower then you pretty much have mm -hmm. everything that you need so like you have to learn to like hold back that's like the one thing that i saw between you and prune where like even though you knew what like half of what was in prune's hand he was just waiting he was like okay bite of my time uh he uses life as a really big resource he doesn't really he knows like where he can um where he has to be aggressive is the thing. Um, is is another thing that I, I, I watched. I play man. I just I just fucking play whatever. Mm -hmm. I'll give you this. He probably knows what the cards are, mm -hmm. so he has a better understanding of what the cards are. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like fuck it, rogues. Discard, 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 and then I just fucking. If I have the land, cool. If I don't have the land, well, fuck it. I keep the two no. land hand. Yeah, yeah. I did tell Eric about that. He was he was playing a storm deck. If you guys listening don't know what a storm deck is, you play a whole bunch of stuff, and it uh, it's a mechanism that the more spells you play, the oh, more the you get at the end. Stack. It's a mechanic, yes. Yeah, it's a mechanic oh. where yeah, like every uh, you keep count of every spell that you play previous to that spell, and then uh, it it basically makes a, a copy of those. Depending on what the actual card does, um, like the the, I guess the easiest one to go for is a grape shot. It's just a red card that does one damage and it has storm. So your goal in there is to play at least twenty um, spells before that, and then you cast that spell and it's twenty copies of that card, and it eventually kills your opponent. Um, but yeah, yeah, I. I a storm is one of those things that I absolutely love because storm is the epitome of using life as a resource. You have to be able to like gauge when to take damage, um, when to use that life loss to feed other cards. Um, you got to know uh, specific hands and how you've built a deck. Now, in the deck that Eric has, because I've seen it, it's a commander deck. It's a pre-generated deck, and it's a little bit different in commander since it's 100 cards. You can't really... You can do certain things to get uh, Storm off, but when something when your deck is that big and it's only one card that you can... Uh, one copy of a card that you can have, um, it's a little bit harder. But it's, 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 not a, it's, it's not the mentality of how you play the cards. Yeah. Like I saw him play. He doesn't know how to cap the luck. He know how to use the cards the best of the moment. Like he had pretty decent combos. He had winning combos. But the thing is, he didn't know how to play them and, and what stack and what way and what order to have them where he could get the most out of them. It was just like playing them to play. Yeah. Which still so beat John. And when John Aww. loses to Eric, it, it's just different it levels. When great. anybody. I'm pretty sure Sam's in this too because he's played against my brother in card games. We just don't let Eric win. Because if Eric wins in any card game, all hope has been lost. That's a that's a running thing in my house. So from all the nerd shit that we play, mm -hmm. we don't let Eric win. Asshole rule. If you let Eric win, the night's the day's over. The night's over. It's done. I start kicking people out. Three presents for me has just started. Dude, I made Storm go off like a shit low, dude. It was insane. It's your type of deck. So oh, yeah. I was generating a shitload of mana because now they have uh, red cards. Well, they always had red cards that generate mana, but this one is just like even more insane on how you could generate mana and how much money you could generate, regenerate. I had I this. Uh, I had that enchantment that, like that. that uh, you get a construct mm -hmm. equal to the sorcery or instant that you played mm -hmm. on the mana cost. So on this deck, it's a lot of high mana value stuff. Like minimum is five mana to play anything, and it goes all the way up to like ten. 
you the commander it normally comes with. I stopped using it because I watched this uh, episode to shout out to Command Zone, mm-hmm. uh, and they switched it with the alternate uh, commander that you could have there, which is a three mana two two that has that new mechanic called Magecraft that whenever you copy a spell or cast a spell or instant or sorcery, mm-hmm. um, it has like a triggered ability. This yeah. one had. If it causes anything to trigger, uh, it triggers twice. So it would get, uh, instead of 1-1 one, one counter, it would get 2-1-1 two, two one, one counters. Yeah, I'm looking at it So right I would make it, I would make it be- beefy, mm-hmm. and then I would attack with it so I could do the commander damage. Because it's just me and John. Yeah. <laughs> there is this 7-mana uh, instant, oh no, sorcery, that gives you only red mana equal to the amount of land you control. And they have another one that gives you equal amount of mana to the cards in your opponent's hand. And uh, they have this one that gives you treasure tokens. So I was just using that and going off with this uh, Mindful mindful Suspense. Mm -hmm. It costs like six mana and it has Storm and it lets you shuffle your library and then exile the top card and then you can cast it doesn't matter what it is. You just don't pay for it. So I did that for a couple of spells. Uh, and then I would copy the Mindful with like a creature that you can play with a flash that lets you target yourself again if you want. Mm-hmm. But it copies that. So it copies the Storm ability to go off some more. And John's like, what do I do? Because <laughs> I had like a shitload of constructs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I couldn't uh, attack with them. I couldn't get anything with haste. So as soon as my I ended my turn, I was like, okay, next turn I'll get it. Mm-hmm. I I have this this board presence. Fucking John just gave judgment and it wipes out all my creatures. Dude, so that I was, was like, like uh, one of those twenty minute turns. Yeah. Where he flooded the the board with like stupid amount of creatures. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, all this. He had board presence, and there you knew if he got one more turn. It was game, right? Yeah. And then he just passed the turn and he's like, oh, well, they're to kill everything. Yeah. I was like, God damn it. And as I told him, see, you, you, if you would have had like a winning card in your hand where he gives him haze, where you could attack or anything, mm. it would have been a really good turn. But he it was he threw away that turn because all he did was set up the board, but it came, nothing came up. So it gives you a chance for your opponent to react. I think with Storm, you had to have some kind of Winning card in your hand where you have a turn like that, mm-hmm. you could get something out of it. Might not win you in the game, but it gets you closer winning the game. I just which I did, which I did the next turn because I stormed the game with something else, and I was able to play uh, a card that uh, at combat I could copy a non-legendary creature as many times as I stormed something or as many instant or sorceries I played that turn. Mm-hmm. So I made thirty copies of this board. 4-2 that lets me get a, a instant and sorceries from my graveyard or from my opponent's graveyard mm-hmm. and I could cast them if I want and so I just did that and my commander was like a fucking 50 62, 62 or something like that <laughs> and I just swung with everything like that while still having an army and John's like this is fucking bullshit I was gonna kill everything again the next time I was like nah I got this time I, I won this time the look on his face he was just like yeah, yeah. Yo, Sam, if you get a chance, man, you gotta you gotta download Arena. It's free to play. You can get back into some some magic playing without having to pay for cards. You pay for those nah, cards. See, no, well, technically the only time I actually paid for cards was when I would do like the sneak peeks and shit like that. Well, for you, you? No, for magic. Oh, for the pre-releases. Yeah, the pre-releases. Um, and then it was like. I forgot certain ones that they would do, but release before, dates and pre-release. Yeah, but what what I ended up from uh, Force of Will and Magic, um, my nephew from my ex's side, he bought me a whole bunch of Magic packs. And he's all like, "Oh, I don't know, you know, I heard you played card games, but I didn't know what to get you for Christmas." So I was like, "All right, whatever." So I made a like little crappy deck for him, um, mm. and then I went to how was it Night Owl. Be there on uh, Blanco. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had free tournaments, so I went 
and uh, if you guys remember Manny, he was there too, and like a couple other guys. Well, I ended up getting second place, Manny got first. Uh, but it, since it was a free tournament, there, are, there was like so many people get so many packs, like first place, second place, whatever. So I think there was like only six of us there. So we, second place only got two packs. Um, the first pack I opened up, I pulled a two hundred dollar card out of it. Ooh. Got that, turned around, basically bought half the deck that I was gonna make, and then I just kept playing all the free nights, free nights, winning the packs. I was getting first and second, first and second every time. Just rebuilding my deck, and then by the time I knew it, I already had everything that I was looking for, all high end shit. And then at the very end, I'm like, okay, I need money. So, yeah, nice. <laughs> oh, you could you could do that on Arena, just start playing. I mean, you don't miss playing any of the card games. I do, but I mean, there's an online server for everything now. I heard there's one for Yu-Gi-Oh. I know there's one for Magic. I know there's one for Pokemon. They're creating one for Digimon. But yeah, you don't miss just the competitiveness of card games or just card games alone. Uh, yeah, every once in a while, but I find myself right now, I guess like most things, you kind of get into a card game or a new hobby, you kind of go all into it and after a while, it's whatever. Um, so right now, the only thing that I'm more interested in right now is gaming. Really? Yeah. I'm a, I I could I could feel that. I mean, you just get out of you get a, out of out of things you get into. Yeah, I mean, it all depends too. Like with D and D, whoever's running it is what's gonna make it interesting or not. Because if you have like I, a very monotone person that's doing it, you're just like, all right, I'm bored. Like, or you end up getting I, a DM that's just a jackass and doesn't like you, but. You know. Look, I we we try playing D and D. I just can't get into it. I don't find the fun in it. Who's running it? Multiple people. Uh, we had a, our friend James running for a little bit. Um. Uh, I think Mark was gonna run it once. Rome tried it. Didn't you try to be a DM? No. Fuck they wanted man. you to be DM. What was it, John? They they wanted me to. Be, y'all wanted me to be DM, but there was no fucking way I was gonna read. A, a full book to run a game with you assholes. There's just no way. Which is funny because you read full as big as books for Warhammer. Yeah, but that's and something. Doesn't that, phase you. Yeah, because I like the lore of it. Like playing D and D, like it's because it's a fucking like DMs are a completely different thing, and it's it takes us like a special type of person. To run a a D and D game good, because that was a good story. yeah, so like you have to be able to rein everybody in when needed, and you have to know like honestly how when to kind of let them do their thing. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's just hard. Like the, the the biggest thing is you have to know the rules. Which there's a yeah. lot, uh, and then you have to be able to like craft a story that's like interesting to the crowd of people that you're with. Now with y'all, it's easy. It should be easier because like I can play up a lot of the comedy shit to like make y'all laugh. But then eventually, like you have to get kind of serious about like certain things. You have to get serious about like the enemies are gonna start getting harder because they just have to. Is yeah. if, if you're gonna get stronger and you're gonna be fucking fighting skeletons all the time, like it's just not gonna happen. So like you have to find like that good middle ground, and uh, and uh, the only way you do that is just by running and running and running and running those campaigns, so that you know how to do that for those people. And unfortunately, I don't have the fucking time to do that for y'all. And yeah. then, and then like just being like with y'all in particular, I mean. Eric will, will buy into it because, like, Eric just likes, you know, talking shit. And you can always make D&D what it is. With you, it's always just a little bit different because you don't buy into it. Like, you have to buy I into just, D&D. I can't, I can't find the fun in D&D. I just couldn't. And, and James and his girl did a really good job of mm-hmm. running the games for us. And they helped, helped, helped us. James and, <clears throat> and, they help, and they helped us set up our characters like they took the time and they explained. I just, I, I see, I see people like 
on YouTube and I see people on Twitch have so much fun with the game, and I just I don't I don't see it. I just like I can't. But it's because you, you just understand. have to, you just have to buy into it. Like I'm saying, like you have to buy into what it is. Like it's a role playing game. So like yeah. at certain times, like you have to make up like whatever that character is. Like it's not on the DM to make the make your character interesting for you. It's mm-hmm. on you to make your interest your character interesting for you. So that's all on you. Like I can. Oh, I, I get it. I know. It's me. So, I just I couldn't find that little spark. Yeah, run. but again, like, like, oh, this is my character. It's like, like, yeah, like, but but that's what rock. I'm saying. Turn like, you rock. you have to like, rock. you you have to buy into the character. Like, you can't just like, oh yeah, his name's you gotta fucking. Immerse yourself in it. Yeah, like mm-hmm. his, his name is fucking uh, Blue Blops McGee, and then like you can't just like make up a name and just be like, yeah, this is what he does. Okay, I'm gonna roll because it doesn't like you don't care about it. Like you have to like. For you to enjoy D and D, you have to buy into it. You have to enjoy like crafting your own story and like making the character your own. Like not just like, oh, this is a game. Like just being like, oh, this is like a little more of, like a performance thing. And I think that's the thing. I think that's the thing is you can't buy into it. It's like the performance aspect of it. You got no creativity, girl. I'm not saying that. Probably. Yeah, he doesn't. Is this have true, Sam? You had to buy into the character to have fun. For like, the most how... part, I mean, yeah. yeah, what he's saying is right. Like the way, because I've done a couple of DM games myself, but I always um. do full DM. Um, and the last one that I did, um, have you guys ever seen the movie Nine? Yeah. Yeah. The Muppet one. Yeah, the one with the little Muppets. Okay, uh-huh. that's how it started. All the characters were in the room. They were previously dead. They were all resurrected in that room with no memory, but I had the backstory of everybody, and they had to slowly unlock their backstory. Ooh, okay. No. So it's one of those, like, cool. oh, I'm the prince of the... No, they don't know. They're just like, who the hell are you? Who the hell am I? Like, what the hell is going on? Oh, there's a dead body. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. Oh, like Saw style? Have you ever read the movie? More Very like much. a... Uh, like a... Knives Out type of thing. Like a who done it. Okay. Well, well, no, it was. It, I started off following the kind of the concept of nine. Like there was a guy that gave him control for these mm-hmm. bodies, for the for basically the characters to come alive. Um, oh. And basically, the main plot of the story was for the campaign was they had to find seven pieces of armor that had that each one was a sin. You gotta bring down the camera a little bit. There you go. Uh, each piece of armor was one of the seven deadly sins. Okay. Um, and each armor that you found had obviously the bonuses of it, but also had the negatives of each sin. So you had wrath, like you would do like extra damage or whatever, but you would attack aimlessly. You just attack whoever's close to you because you're just angry. So you're just swinging at there anybody. So that they had to go along with that. Um, and they basically, what ended up happening was so they had to find all seven pieces of armor. They found it, ended up going to basically the last boss. All pieces of the armor became one person, which was the guy that resurrected, basically resurrected the devil. Oh, okay. See, I wouldn't, I wouldn't find that. I wouldn't get into that and be like, yeah, that's fun. I would just been like, oh, that's a cool story. Cool. But I, I, mean, wouldn't, it I wouldn't have been yeah. like, I want to find out who I am. Well, I just, I don't, I don't understand. D and D, I always saw, I always said that D and D was a little bit too nerdy for me. I was just like, mm, no, no, thank you. I, I'm, a, I'm a just a nerdy shit. But D and D was always that. You're not. That, <laughs> that, that different turns out that. Like I, I'll play video games and card games, and I collect toys, and I know my my Marvel history and my DC comic history. I, I'll talk. Manga and anime with you, Not but D and D is just so much oh. like you don't know shit. Yeah, now DC history, you don't know dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, 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 know, you know, you know, you know, you know, big, you know, big beats because I've told you big beats, but you don't know the fucking DC history. Bro. Like, nah, no, 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 don't, don't, the juice from you, bro. don't, don't, don't fucking sit here and, 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 and mock, and mock me, all right, because. 
I'm I'm the you fucking know. nerd when it comes to DC. Marvel, I mean, yeah. I know big no, no, strokes. No, no, no. I'm not look. First of all, I wasn't yeah. saying. He, but he, he can, he don't, can don't do you dare well, say bro. that you fucking know fucking DC. Jeopardy, bro. <laughs> why, why can't I not know? Well, the cream rises to the top, Tony. I'm just saying. It make it. It's making it sound like I was like, nah, Roman, you don't know shit. I mean, it's that's I what it think, sounded I like. I wasn't taking your, I wasn't taking your yeah. creativity. You triggered him. Yeah, I was just right. saying I'm that. this podcast. He's triggering it. Oh, well, later. <laughs> All right, later. later. Bye, Sam. You made Sam leave. I hope you're happy, bro. <laughs> Good. Because if it's it's all because of you. Fucking bad about these D and D skills. You're like, oh fuck yeah, oh. that story sounds cool, but you're not cool enough to fucking play. So that's what it, that's what's making Sam leave right now. All right. That's what's making Sam. See, and he's shaking. Uh, it. He, he's he's fucking nodding in, in approval. Like, yeah, yeah, he nailed it. See, <laughs> like, boom. All right, there's right. a. Bye, Sam. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of stuff I had to learn for the podcast. Oh, you... Sort of. I know shit. Sort of. I, I have to know shit. I'm, I'm not saying that shit. you you don't know a little stuff, but I mean, I just just come on. I mean, I I I, I would DC agree. thing. He just he just got triggered. Yeah, it's the just thing it, is, it's DC. In the general, thing is, yeah. at what point, at what point, and how much knowledge do I have to have be considered a guy who knows DC history? Oh no! I'm just being I'm just being an asshole. I'm just being like one oh, of those. I, I, I'm, I'm being what I'm being the, the internet gatekeeper. Let's, like, well, let's, actually, let's, let's go back to the <laughs> the whole nerdy stuff and the whole the whole title thing. Mm-hmm. Like, how much does it have to? You were saying I'm not a car guy, right? Yeah. You told me I never considered you a car guy. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, how much do I guy. have to? How much do I have to know, or how much do I have to do to be considered a car guy? Like, what where did? Where do you earn that title? I I well again that's just it was just my opinion it was more of a joke more than anything but no, no, like no, 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 no. with with, but with it like in general like just oh. in general I think it's just like if you're passionate about it I think that's when you become like that kind of guy is like I like obsess I wouldn't say obs- like like you obsessions know I like a sh- it's is? a really strong you know, word you know what the thing is though Tony has I think he has the movie idea of a car guy like. Toretto and and Gone in sixty seconds, where like you know for some reason you could play a fucking engine sound and you could tell what engine it's from or something like that. Like you could tell like so when guys imitate like the turbos on certain cars, it's like oh this is a Supra, the like a Supra with the something something turbo, and he's like yeah, and so on. Not even you know he could me. To me, a car guy is like, oh, you see, you see like, junk cars? Mm-hmm. Like, I could probably fix that. They enjoy fixing it. They're but, days but off. That, that's... They, you know, that, like, like me. Uh-huh. They take a, a car guy, if they would have a classic car like we do, uh-huh. there is no way they would let it sit. Oh, no fucking They'd be no. running it. Right? Yeah. They, they would take days off, is and it? they would chinker with it, they would mess with it, they would You know what a car it. guy would do? They would fix it and sell it. Or fix it and drive it. Or have it exactly. in a driving thing still going. I, and that, that's what Eric I'm saying. Said, it's 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 the passion. Like obsessions, like too strong a word. The <laughs> okay, passion okay. and the motivation to do the hobby. Yes. Or whatever it is. Yeah, I think that's, that's what I'm missing. I don't, I don't think I'm passionate about anything. And and that's the thing is like that's when like when you said like oh like uh, like when you said like oh, you're a car guy. I'm like no like you know things like you know like. Uh, more common things like oh like troubleshooting things for your car um but like to say you're a car guy it's like it's a passion it's something that like it's not something that you're constantly thinking about you know what i mean it's not like it doesn't uh it's not an obsession where you're thinking about it like every minute of every day it brings you happiness but it's, while yeah you do it's, it. it's something that brings you happiness while you're doing it. passion like this. when when you when you see that you're like ah, all right i gotta start working like no, you, you see it there wait. for a week, and you're like, "Yeah, I gotta, I gotta do something for it." How do you, how do you put passion, and happiness, knowing the history of DC? Like, how do you know that? Uh, like, like when you someone asks, he's like, uh, "Batman, I don't know, a villain, mm-hmm. like Batman's villain." Yeah. Like, oh man, like you want to know a good arc of that, or mm-hmm. they just know that? 
Oh, like when we're talking about the uh, coming up anime, the was it the the long Halloween that we're talking about? Yeah. Last episode, mm-hmm. like how you knew the the Calendar Man, mm-hmm. like very people that just know Batman, you know, his main villains like the Riddler, yeah, Batwoman, and stuff like that. They wouldn't know Calendar Man yeah. unless they know a little bit of history. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and like I'm not like the fucking like uh. And I, I'm a, I'm a DC guy for sure. And I know, I think I know a little more than the average person for DC, but just say like, oh, like I can't do the first appearances and shit. Like, oh, the first appearance of Calendar Man. I'm like, oh, I have no fucking idea. Like I, that See, I don't I know. Thought you would do, I thought like, you would because you worked in a comic shop. No, I know the big ones. Cause like, that's yeah. the ones that people always ask you for. Like, oh, what's Batman's first appearance? Oh, Detective Comics number 27. Uh, oh, how much does that go for? Uh, probably like two point three million dollars. Like, it, it just like a little factoids that you can like tell people. Like, it, would you ever pay for that? Like, like no, if anybody no. asks, if if you were to ask me who would I go for more comic information, depending on like DC or oh, it's Nate. Marvel. That would be Nate. Yeah, Nate's like Nate, Nate, Nate for sure. Yeah, Nate's like a like all, like an encyclopedia when it comes to kind of shit like that. Exactly. So like yeah, yeah, yeah. when I think of like the comic guy, that's Nate, like for sure. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm a carpet bagger at best. You know what I mean? Like I I know some stuff, but just say that. I would, I would also say maybe Carlo for like Marvel and some. Not. Dynamite, but more like turtle stuff. I would go for like Ch- Carlo for like X Men stuff because he knows his X Men yeah. stuff for sure. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. um, yeah, Nate, you know, shout out to Nate. Maybe we can get him on the podcast. Um, yeah, shout maybe. out to Naders. Um, Naders and the Sutton Sag. Yeah, good old Sutton Sag. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. he he knows his shit for like Marvel and image like he knows like a lot of creators and like writing processes and things like that so he, he's, he's a really good guy to tap for that sort of stuff i just know like bullshit shit like oh like who did this run on batman oh yeah i know that the creator. year it was made yeah yeah uh, or the year of the run yeah exactly like i'm like oh like danny o'neill and fucking uh what's his face greg rucka no. I don't know who Greg Rucka is. <laughs> He's a writer. Like, he, he did, he did write Batman see, during like, the 2000s. I know. I know. I know New Adams. There you go. Spots and shit. But I don't know. I don't consider myself uh, an expert at anything. Like, mm-hmm. when I went to school for cars, I went there just so I could, like, learn something. But I didn't consider myself a gearhead. I'd be like, oh, yeah. And someone says, hey, my car don't start. I was like, I just go through a process of elimination. And I'm like, what could it be the problem? I don't know where it's located. Yeah. On certain vehicles, but, you know. But they're like, oh, my car doesn't start. I was like, does it crank? When you turn the key, does it make this noise? And shit like that. And they're like, oh. And then people would come to me because I'd be helpful enough to be calm, like patient enough and go and run through the process and see, like, oh, you could do this and that. And then I could just point them to like a mechanic that could do the job, and then just retest to make sure that my theory was correct. Yeah. Type of deal. But I never once said, "Oh yeah, I'm a car dude." No, no, no. See, I'm, just, I think, I, I'm a I slacker. Think my mistake. I think my mistake is trying to just earn a title or a moniker or be known for something. Yeah, fuck the title. Uh, what I want to do. The, the, the title doesn't. You know what? It, you know what it wrote me. You know what it is though. Too. I was thinking about it today. Hmm. Because the joke of the house is I'm a girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm one of, one of the I'm a nanny, mm-hmm. right? And I'm uh, um, fucking like since I, I was cooking and I went to for school for culinary arts and stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. I want I want I want the lady folk. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking it's like maybe I'm looking to for a title so hard because I I want to be known for that. I want to be known as fucking the dude that the nanny like my grandma. My grandma, she just like used to tell everybody, "Oh, he, he's a babysitter." And all my family just knows me as, as the nanny. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. The one who takes care of uh, my nieces, my nephews, my little brother with Down syndrome. That yeah. was me. I'm the dude. I'm, but God, that is not manly at all. I just don't want to be known for that. I just don't. 
but like and, you know the, the right for the part for the right thing, the, you know. And then and he just, gets real mad, so he took like a real male chauvinistic type of uh, tone right now. He's like, women belong in the kitchen and. Blah, oh blah, yeah, blah. I, I did, I did that with a girl well. because she's a she's a feminist. Yeah. And one of the things yeah. that feminists hate yeah. is be like, women belong in the kitchen kind of deal. Mm. But dude, I just don't want to be known for. I mean, being a nanny. I mean, it's just well, then there's only one way to change that. Like, you have to like do, do stuff. stuff. Like, you have to do I forgot who I was talking that. to. Oh, my cousin. I was talking to one of my cousins. Mm-hmm. I said, "Hey, I'm, I'm a podcaster. You know, I have eight podcasts. Mm-hmm. I had multiple podcasts. This is when, when we had the comic corner, and we had um, you guys were doing two fools, and I used to come like I think I was in, like one or two of the Warhammer ones, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I I was like, yeah, I'm a podcaster. He's like, you do, you are. He's like, you have a following. It's like, I think we're very gonna reach a hundred subs, mm-hmm. right? I go, no, we're not even a hundred subs, it's like." When you, you should be calling yourself a podcaster. Mm-hmm. I was like, how is it's true, I guess. It's, I mean, uh, it hurt. I mean, there's two schools of thought. I mean, there, huh? there's two schools of thought. Like, you can, like, uh, you can, like, fake it till you make it kind of thing. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, yeah I'm a podcaster. It's just what I am. It's the thing, though. I want to earn the fucking moniker title. Like, but, if I say I'm, I'm a car the- guy. Like well, when I go around and I introduce and say, like, "Hey man, you know, I'm, I'm," I was like, "I'm a car guy, right?" Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Yeah, you, you are." But like, I what? Want to be... a, like, okay, so I, I so you know. so you just want approval it's just from titles. other people. Yeah. You're, you're just the problem, the thing is, see, the thing is, the thing, of, the thing about that, the approval from other people, I think it makes it full circle. If others approve of what you're doing, it means that you are. Like, yeah, you could call yourself whatever you want, all you want. You can fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. But it's not until someone else recognizes you for it or someone else tells you you are it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't consider myself the person of the title. You know yeah, I mean? but but I think... I, uh, not until you get recognized or someone says, hey, man, you're this kind of guy or you're that type of guy or you know this kind of knowledge. And, and you're in my brain because I, yeah. I have a fucked up brain. Mm-hmm. I know that much. It it doesn't come full circle. It's not real until someone else says it's real. Like I could go around saying I'm this and that. Yeah. But if no one else goes, yeah, he's that. You're or, you're yeah, like you're like you're... America declaring its independence. Like you need validation from France to be like, yeah, they're a country. Because without <laughs> the validation, it's not real, isn't it? I mean, the validation should probably come from within yourself first. Like you should be like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'm, I'm a podcast. Any and all thing that you do, you gotta be good within yourself, like to know that you that you are good at that. Yes, like the whole thing is like it has to to be be from your like it all has to start from yourself, bro. Like it's self evaluation. It's the thing you don't have to be good to be known for something. You could be a shitty electrician, you still be an electrician, Mm -hmm. right? You could be a shitty car guy, but you still be a car guy. But that's like a I'm pride okay with, thing. Look, that's a thing, though. I'm okay with being the negative side of things. As long as someone goes, yeah, that's a car guy. Or yeah. That's but a it's, they're like, but, hey, but, don't, go, don't go to that guy. He's not a car guy. But it, like. You don't, you can't be the shitty thing. you got to be good No, at no, it. no. I've heard people be like, yeah, I wouldn't go with that guy. He knows his shit, but he doesn't do it completely right. Uh, he but, cuts corners. But, but, you're, but th- this is all like. You, though. it's just all, yeah, it's all, it's, 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 it's all in you because, like, being a babysitter, like, or, or, like, being like uh, a housekeeper, I mean, but, that, a but, folk, but <laughs> that's all you, though. Like, the, the thing is, like, those aren't innately like terrible things to be, it's just yeah, that the, the, the thing is, is, but that's, really, but again, a lot, that's, of, a lot of people, a lot of uh, males in the animal kingdom are known to be the uh. The, the child protector, the child watcher. The yeah, child penguins. Watcher. Penguins, wolves, no, fucking... Wants to be a penguin. Everybody wants to be a wolf. Fucking... I thought wolves were... Seahorses. I thought wolves, the women, protected the cubs. Nope. It's the yeah. men. The lioness go and hunt. The lion men take care of the cubs. 
fucking what else? I just saw it too. Like, there's an animal that it just uh, hyenas. That's, that's why I try so much to be a person of a thing because that is just the validation makes you real. Yeah, but I think that, so. But that's like again, like going back to like being a housekeeper like, or being and, like a, a babysitter isn't like innately a bad thing. Like it's it's like, not it's just not a bad thing. Well, it's, just, it's, it's just it's children. just that it's just that you ex, you yeah, might expect yeah you expect more out of yourself but you're yeah. not doing anything to do so which is funny because when people call me an asshole and a piece of shit i mean like i'm cool with it or mean i'm like i'm cool with it i like i don't want to be known for like it's weird. I'm complicated. Whatever. I'm just next thing. It's just, you just, you just whack. I'm just, uh, again, I'm just fucking whack. Again, there, there's, there's certain problems that you're not wanting to, uh, to address here, buddy. It, it yeah, all, it I all, just, it all comes back to that. There's certain right? things that you just don't want to address, and like you, def- just, uh, you do these certain things. I, and that's you why know you... what? I just, I think I'm just lost in my own fucking head. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's it. But again. Again, like you've gone to therapy and you say that that doesn't help you uh, necessarily. So, like, I. This is my therapy. Welcome to uh, ther- psychology cast. No, therapy cast? Whatever. Welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this would be. Uh, I mean, it's just. A, it, we're, you just vent. Like, yeah, like the podcast is like a place where you can vent. But it's is, not, not necessarily. Because, mm-hmm. no, because venting is just, like, you understand, like, you might get made fun of, you know, especially with us. Um, a therapist isn't going to make fun of you. They're going to be like, well, why do you think that? They they make you, or, or again, I've never been to a therapy session, so I can't. Uh, you try it? I, I hope. For sure, for sure. It's something that's on my, my to-do on list. list. Yeah, for sure. Um it's just something that, from what I've gathered, it's the talking cure. You know, you, you talk about it. They give you a suggestion of, like, hey, maybe this is something uh, to work on here. But for the most part, you're going to be doing a lot of the discovery yourself. And that it's not, there's no uh, fixing you. It's just, <laughs> damn it. there's no, there's no uh, like, cure. It's just ways to mitigate it. Um, yeah, like I said, I think at the end of the day, I just don't know what I want. That's all it is. At the end of the day, you're, you, uh, are, you don't like yourself and the situation that you're in. Yeah, pretty much, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that the fucking truth? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, again, you, you want to, what the fuck are you doing, Eric? It's so oh, dis- I didn't notice it. It's so distracting, it's just like... I don't know what he's doing. He's just moving his like camera that. all the time. Is he? Is that yeah. what's happening? Yeah, he's just like moving the camera, like doing this and that. Oh, and... No, I, I have nothing but a black screen on mine. Man. So, uh, I guess this is as good a time as any to get you some comments, just because. Yeah. I. I, I mean, this, this this has been all over the place. I don't know what Eric's doing. You probably don't want to know. He's probably doing something dumb. It's Eric. Yeah, so we're gonna get to some comments. And uh, you guys, yeah, if you guys wanna uh, express yourself for what would you say, dude? If you wanna leave a comment, you can leave so down below. I was gonna or what the fuck is? Oh my god, sorry, I'm having such a brain fart. Oh, talk to it. Come on. Talk... No, I was like, if you just wanna express yourself or. The fucking air out ain't the you always leave a comment. That's all I was trying to get to. If you like, want to join in, uh, hold on, hold on. If you want to <laughs> join in on the venting, you can go and comment down venting. below. If you guys want to or... fucking vent, <laughs> leave yourself in the comments. YouTube.com slash group. Why can't I go. think of the fucking word vent, dude? Swear to God, I had such a bad week. It happens. It happens to the best of us, dog. But if you don't want to leave a comment down below, you can always send us an email at citypod88 at gmail.com. I would say Eric, but I don't know if he can hear me. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. It's Eric. (laughs) Uh, You mouthed it, Uh, Eric, but we cannot hear you at all. 
It wouldn't be a shitty podcast if it wasn't a shitty podcast. So he's pointing and blinking very oddly. That's about it. Uh, but we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. But we're going to go ahead okay. and get you those comments. Now, YouTube is being a fickle bitch. And uh, we can't look at comments normally the way we would. Uh, so I have to read them off of my phone like in the olden days. Uh, but here we go. All of our comments are from the man, the myth, the legend, the pro. So it's time oh, to keep it regs. That was pre. Uh, that was a uh, preempted baby. All right, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some slack, Tony, because you had a bad week. <sighs> so fuck, dude. All right, so his first comment: uh, collectible cards are easier to track. Uh, you can usually gauge them by how many cards are printed. True, but not every card company will make that information available. Um, and when they do, it's not necessarily upon release. It's usually months later. Um, but that is true. You can gauge it by its print run and uh, you see, this, know, how many this are dude, This dude knows his stuff. Of, for sure, for he sure. Is, he, he does know his stuff. He knows I'll give his you them. shit for sure. Let's, let's shout out to. All right, so sorry about that. I had to pee very badly. I was really proud of myself last episode, where it was just like no pee breaks. We just go through it. Now I fucking I'm disappointed with myself again. <laughs> I had to go through a pee break. Pee break. Um, but I will say, y'all gotta learn to vamp. <laughs> y'all gotta learn how to talk. Just. Just ramble for a little bit while somebody's gone. Cause, oh yeah, it's you, you, kind of weird when it's just me by myself. Yeah, but like I think when I'm streaming, it's such a weird thing of me talking to a screen without hearing you guys like conversate back. But that's the that, thing. That like was, that was a weird like experience. I was like, what the fuck? But that's the thing. Is like, um, uh, like take. Like there, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and a lot of podcasts, there's like unexpected things that happen, and mm -hmm. he's like, "Oh, I gotta go get the door real quick." So like, one of them w will run out, and it's just gonna be one guy by himself, and sometimes he'll just go off topic, like completely from what they were talking about before. But it's just a way to like keep the show going, oh, like yeah, yeah, while yeah. while everything else is going. And it's, I, I, it's I, like I, talking I, to the camera by itself. Exactly, and I it's wish. Weird. I wish y'all would do that a little more. Yeah, I can't fucking hear you, Eric. Tony, or Eric. I wish you had more time. But I don't know. It's just weird. Like, like when I was streaming for the first time, mm -hmm. and you guys were in the room, I, I, it felt so odd, dude. So damn odd. But that's odd the thing. Life. Like, you, you have to, you have to do. But the thing is, like, it's put it in the reps. Like, it feels weird at the moment. But mm. the thing is, like, being able to interact with people when you do see those comments pop up and, like, addressing that is a good thing. The thing is, like, is that's that's how it's going to be. That's how all streamers are. are because they're not always different. Did you feel odd when you were doing it? No, not at all. No? no. Like, when you, I just, I was like, man... No, you just like uh, my problem is is that I don't talk at all during the broadcast. So like I think like I would handle that differently now. I think I would try to fill in that that kind of uh, dead air for myself. Like if what? I if I were to do like video game things, I would willfully try to start talking about not necessarily what I'm doing, but just talk. So it could be about Which, the a game in general. It could be about just like something that happened that day. <clears throat> so and, and that's the thing. Like that's the thing with vamping. And I think I've gotten better with that just through the reps of being able to just like think out loud and uh, just put thoughts out there, whatever it is. If, if it's I always you know, thought you streaming Warhammer, um, you painting, mm -hmm. would you would make it actually really interesting. I it's something that I've been so just a, I've been thinking of just on the knowledge alone that you have of it. Yeah, 
Yeah, for sure. Like, I'm pretty sure. But then again, I think if you stream, mm -hmm. right, while doing the hobby, mm -hmm. I think it puts more pressure on you, which it will make it less fun. Um, there is an aspect of that that I think would happen. Um, but my problem with it, with, with painting in general, is that I just get hyper focused into painting. So it's mm -hmm. it's sort of hard to um to talk. Like it, it's a little more mindless, I would say, with the video game. I cannot hear you there. No. You can't hear me? Now I can. No. Yeah, no, I wasn't saying anything the first time. I was just making sure. All right, there you go. Um but yeah. when it comes to to like video games, like it's at least like a more brainless activity, even though you are thinking mm -hmm. of certain things you should do within the game. Um you can talk, you know, through it. When it's painting, it's hard because I'm concentrating on getting this one thing right that I want. So in in that case with painting, it's a bit different. But it's something yeah, that I do want to try. I think the professionals that uh, uh, Duncan, the mm -hmm. dude used to be on the Warhammer TV, mm -hmm. he takes like little pauses to look at the screen and interact. But you could tell like he's in his own, and he he like. The camera's only on his hand in the minis, mm -hmm. or not a hand, but he has one of those fancy uh, miniature holders. Mm -hmm. But you could tell where he takes pauses to interact with the audience or whatever, or kind of explain what he's doing. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. And and I would see you more of a person like that, but I think putting the pressure of streaming or recording yourself doing it takes kind of some of the fun or the relief that you get from it. Possibly. Like, I think. I think you use your hobby time just to get away from reality for a little bit. Yeah, and you but I, I mix it with record because I was I always pressure you in recording and streaming. It's like, oh man, you should do this and you should do that. And it wasn't until I had a conversation with actually a dude that works at Heroes. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, because I was talking about I was in the stream and shit. Because mm -hmm. I don't know, dude. Sometimes that takes away from the fun of the game because. Your pressure now to do certain things yeah. that you usually wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Like you had to be mindful of stuff. Like oh, I'll oh, take the the match I had with Prune. Mm -hmm. I wasn't totally focused on playing Prune because mm -hmm. I was trying to get the adjustments and the stream stuff okay. right. But the thing is, I never thought about it. Though. I was like, oh man, I I always tell everybody if you guys want to, you should try. You should try recording. You should try. Podcast and streaming, mm -hmm. it's you know it's it's fun, but, but I never thought of, I never put the process or thought that it might take away from the actual enjoyment you guys get from whatever you do. Mm -hmm. No, it's like hmm. I never thought of it because like I was talking to John the other day, and then all those these future plans we have mm -hmm. for the Warhammer stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like I want to set up a tournament. I want to. Do little things for the community, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it has to go through you guys because you guys are the face of the community. Mm -hmm. I was like, maybe that's... I never thought about it. Like, maybe I'm putting pressure on something they, they wouldn't do because it takes away from the enjoyment. It was just a whole different conversation in my head I had. For, for sure. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Like, um, I think there can be enjoyment in the streaming process, but it just depends on, like, I th think that's what they mean by, like, the, the community that you cultivate. Like, if you cultivate the, the people that understand what you try to do and, like, the, your, your humor and, like, when you talk, like, they get it, then mm -hmm. I think that's what keeps it fun and, like, uh, entertaining for yourself. Because yeah, like there there is a certain like amount of pressure, like fuck, I gotta stream. But the thing is, and and this is like maybe something to talk about afterwards. But like one of the things about Grimworks is like it's all of us. So if somebody wants to do something, we just can like yeah, go ahead and do it, and we'll just fucking put it on the channel. It doesn't matter. But yeah. uh, my whole thing was like I was split between like oh like my romantics thing and then Grimworks and even though if you watch a lot of those like gameplay videos that I did um, I did put like a Grimworks production you know that's where that joke comes in that Grimworks production 
because uh, mm -hmm. that, that was always my the, the intro to any of my videos. And did you ever realize like, that when you said DreamWorks Production when you were fatter, you sounded different? Did I? Yeah. Like, you'd be like, DreamWorks Production. Now but I say, now, like, DreamWorks Productions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did, but you sounded fatter. <laughs> I don't know if that I I don't know if that's like a, maybe maybe just like I had all this fucking white hair. And Grim Productions. Initially, that's what Grimworks Production was supposed to be. Yeah, it was a place where I could help my friends and family make content and put it up for them. Because mm -hmm. having a SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, it costs money, and not everybody can pay for it. Mm -hmm. Or nobody, not everybody wants to pay for it. Yeah. Like the subscriptions of, of every year, mm -hmm. the renewal of all the stuff. I was like, okay, I could. Everybody wants to make videos. I could put it off for them, and and I still do it to now. Like, I was telling them because I had such a hard time learning all this stuff. Mm -hmm. The learning curve was crazy. Mm -hmm. I I I put it out there. It's like, if you guys need any help, or I could um give you any hints of how we do things, mm -hmm. because I mean, we're not the best. Uh, podcasting or anything, but at least we get the stuff out there. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I tell them if you guys need help or you want any kind of knowledge of equipment I use or stuff that I use to make the content, mm -hmm. I'll let you guys know. If you want me to help you, you or you want to create something, I can even put it on the on the YouTube channel for you guys. Mm -hmm. For right, I try to I try to put that out there. Like if they need help, I could help. Because I know the learning curve is crazy and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's what Greenworks was supposed to be. That's why it's Greenworks Productions. Because I was trying to produce all this content. It just the name just stuck. And I know for for a minute there, you didn't want to create that much stuff, like your music and. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I still don't want to do music. Yeah, uh, it, I think you, I think your music are that's a personal hobby for you. Yes, you're alone. Uh, that is very much like. Uh, that is that is my form of little therapy. That's just for me. Um, but mm -hmm. I mean that could change. Which, is, but... which sucks because I always said you have true talent for music. I mean, and I wanted to showcase to the world, but you were always either afraid or you didn't have the confidence that you were good enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was alright. It wasn't like that good. I mean, that that's the thing is like the 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 thing about it is that. Uh, I didn't have the that thing to take it to the, to like that level of like oh this is what I do like I just kind of like fucked around a lot. Yeah, the drive. Even even though like I would play you know like three hours a day whatever, um, it would just be, um, just for fun. You know what I mean? So I never got into like there is a theory. There is, you know, musical theory. And there is, like, things that... There are certain rules within music that we sort of kind of have to follow. Um, in terms of, like, a, like, uh, like composition of music and, and stuff like that. So it, it is different. I'm not saying that people don't already break that and don't make, like, badass music doing that. It's just... Um, I mean, a you, lot of people's careers and and no started just from covers and you do really good covers but but yes and no because like covers are one thing but the thing is a lot of people that do those covers like understand music um they understand like the way that these things are broken down they understand keys um i don't necessarily understand like keys and things like that i'm just an internet like taught fucking uh guitar player you know what I mean? I can play guitar, I can play bass, but it's all just through tablatures. It's not like real music. Like you, that's what I'm saying. Like to understand those covers and like why people do certain covers and can do them in completely different styles is because they understand musical theory and they understand like, oh well, for this they have to do there's certain things that you have to like rework, and they know how to do that. I don't. So like I so don't you, you, I don't you're know telling that. Me that talent without the knowledge is not good enough. Yes, yes. You have to have, like, some form of knowledge. Unless you're, like, some kind of, like, fucking, like, savant, like, you know, like, savant. Jimi Hendrix, you know what I mean? Like, where I mean, he, he didn't he, understand he, musical theory at all, he just kind of played by feel and by, 
Like he just he it was like he said that oh I describe uh music by colors. So like oh like this this uh is red and it like turns into like a blue. So like he would like and and you just he would just work that way with other people. So like there there are people that just understand it and like just have a natural talent for that and they um it, it becomes their passion, you know what I mean? And again like passion feeds all that. And then that passion but there there's a certain thing like you have to have what was it? I think there was a um a comic book artist, uh, Greg Capullo. Uh, he said, like, um, he would talk about, like, you have to have a gift first. Like, you have to have the gift of what it is, and then you build on it. But you're not going to build on it unless you have that gift, like that, that inclination to put towards that passion that you have. You know what I mean? Like, mm. you have to have an innate talent, like an innate ability and then you build on that. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just, like... And, and there are people, like I said, there's always the exceptions to the rules. But I think... I, I believe really heavily in, like, you have the gift, and then you build on it. And I don't necessarily know that I had the gift. I think I just, like, kind of fucked around with things and really got into music and, and certain aspects of it. Um, but to, like... Say I had a gift, I don't think so. You got the shiny. No, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the shiny. Yeah, shinny. I never thought about that. Freshing is fresh and hype. Because I, I tell everybody, if you ever want to create, let me know. Or you should create. Take our homeboy Aaron. Yeah. I go, hey, man, you should just stream. You should record your gameplay. You should do all this, right? Mm -hmm. I never thought about by me saying it's like, man. Because it comes easy to me. And be like, oh, okay, I'm just recording shit, right? Mm -hmm. I'd be like. I never thought about it, how it takes away from the enjoyment of the things they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. To me, it was just like, and it, it comes easy, but I never thought it, I never thought about it that way. Take so, I mean, like, maybe it just, you know, it's weird. Yes, but I think there I is. The of it is just, they forget, they want to, they enjoy it, and they're like, oh, all right, I was supposed to record it, and I'm like, oh, fuck it. They don't have to record. It's more if they want to. If they want to do it, they'll do it. Mm -hmm. Not a but fun enjoyment. At a certain point, I think you do have to force yourself to do things. Like, I guess Tony dropped out uh, for a little bit. Um, but w when oh. it, all right, I guess Tony's back. Um, if he's talking, I can't. No, no, I can. Okay, there you go. I think I connected um, right. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Um, right. like, t take, like, the, the whole, um, painting thing that I do. Like, I've been on a streak, you know what I mean? Like, I force myself to do, and that's the thing, I force myself to do 30 minutes of hobby a day. So, like, sometimes it's like, oh, I can't wait to fucking paint. Sometimes it's that. And sometimes I'm like, fuck, I don't want to do this. Or I procrastinate and I wait until the last 30 minutes before I have to get to bed to do something. You know what I mean? Um, and, and sometimes it's not fun. But I, it, the thing is, just like everything else, you're going to have bad days where you don't want to do it. You know what I mean? Just like True. fucking work. Like Sometimes you don't want to work. Sometimes you're like, okay, I'm going to work today. Sometimes you're like eager to go to work. Um, but it's, I think streaming is like that. I think you s start off with a... I don't know if you can force somebody to stream though. I think they have to kind they have to want to stream first and then like, hey, you gotta stream now. Come on. Like we have a, like if I for me particularly, if I know there's a schedule we have to maintain, then I will make sure to hit that schedule. Just because that's just the kind of person I am. Um I think that that I think that's what I gotta get. I just have to be consistent. Yeah, and if you're gonna do, get like, there. if you're gonna do like the trick Twitch thing, like, to get to an affiliation, um, you have to do certain days of streaming, um, you have to I'm have... guessing with, with anything else, the more you do it, the more you learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. The, the, the easier it becomes. Mm -hmm. I was just paying the fucking head to get to the beginning of it, though. 
That's true. Very true. But we're there, though. Yeah. Just yeah. like the podcast. I know we talked about it like half a year before we even created the podcast. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until, you know, we were like, all right, time to pull a fucking trigger and I bought all this shit. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, we're making a podcast, yes or no? Yes, we are. You know what they say. You can't make an omelet without raping them. I mean, busting some few nuts, you know what I'm saying? Work on, work, work on it. Work on it. Work on it. I had it. Work, workshop. It. Little... <laughs> workshop it a little bit. You, you started. You started off strong and fucking failed miserably. But I did. Again, wor- workshop it. We're, we're good, yeah. buddy. Um, but we still have some more comments because I know we got. We do have more comments. <laughs> yeah, that was all from one fucking comment. Mm-hmm. So no, actually, that, that was all off of pee break. Yeah, that was off of pee break, bro. Um. Oh, so. Do I want to edit? Do I not want to edit? We'll see how you I should. feel tomorrow. I'm not. It's like, um, but uh, the comment before I had to go was, uh, I go looking for cards all the time. And you can easily find Yu-Gi-Oh! and MTG at Walmart or Target. So, it's true. You can find all that stuff. Um, I don't know. I Again, I'm I, for me, I'm not that kind of collector. So, I'm not going to be looking for that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not a flipper. No. I no. want to say I am, and I got stuff to flip, but like, I'm okay with letting it go for store credit to get more stuff. Mm. Like, uh, for example, I was supposed to get um, what was it? The Hero Crisis. I was supposed to get mm. some of the Hero Protocol. Mm. I was supposed to get a couple more. Uh, figures off of selling um, a Vampire Tutor and some other cards that I got from like a um, a couple of those double master boosters. Okay. Uh, but the person that I was gonna do the trade with did not reach out to me at all for a while, like. Like, I, I remember I told John, hey, we're going to do this. Uh, when are we going to do it? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't know. I got to wait for a text. She never freaking text. So I never did the trade. And I ended up going to this other store that gave me about was a fair price. That was like half of what uh, TCG Player does. Mm-hmm. And I was able to get basically just more cards uh, from that new set that Kalheim, or a couple cards that I really wanted. Mm-hmm. I didn't care that I, you know, I could have made like the 60, 70 bucks because they were going to do the trade thing. Mm-hmm. But I said I got get rid of like a $70 card for like 30, 40 bucks. Yeah. 30, 30, about $30. And I was all right with that. I was like, fuck it. I got yeah, Eric just likes stuff. I like stuff. I get stuff. I like get stuff. If I want to pay full price or not full price, I'm alright with it. He's a he's a person all of the moment. He just wants stuff. Fair enough. True. True. Next. But I think the main thing is you gotta know what kind of person you are, and you gotta be alright with that. Yeah, that's I mean, true. Like that so. is true. Uh, no. His next comment. That's, that's the, the problem with Tony. He's not happy with who he is. Because he wants more. But he does not go for more. I think. Fair that's enough. That's my two cents. <laughs> Prune's that next comment. Diabaric. <laughs> huh? <laughs> that's you regarding to your diabetes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he spelled it, it's uh, D- diabetes, yeah. but instead of the at the end, it's Eric. Yeah. So, diabetes, like di- di- diabetic. Diabetic? Diabetics. It was a little prune jab at Eric. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like it. He's got the beaties, that's for sure. Mm. Down with the beaties. And then his last comment, or at least the last one we can see, because I think. Uh, YouTube. Oh, no, wait. This is the last one from Prune because the last one was a porn one, apparently. 
Yeah, um, thank you. So, Shouts out to the porn people. So, Prune's, co- Prune's co- last co- comment. <laughs> Prune's last comment. Eric watches Thunder Force. Which I don't know what Thunder Force is. It's a <laughs> Netflix show. It's a Netflix well, show with Jenna McCartney and uh, Precious something, or Star Jones, I think. <laughs> Sounds awful. Anyways. Oh, yeah, no doubt. It looks super awful. It looks awful. I haven't seen it. But right. I would watch it. All right, and I was keeping it regular with the broom. He tries to shame me, but I have no shame. Also, Eric is playing uh, Mobile Legends. I already see it in his eyes. Uh, so, either <laughs> way... Focus. That is All the right. end of the podcast. Thank this you for listening. This has been episode 206. Oh, okay. This has been episode 206 of the podcast. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for listening. We have been your hosts. I'm Tony and I'm here with... Your boy, Eric. Hate that boy. I really do. Of course. I fucking want to kill him. Uh, this is Roman. <laughs> but either way, like we say at the end of every episode, bye. 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 bye.